Welcome back to week four of Data Lit. Now we're going to start diving into the meat and potatoes of data science, which is figuring out how variables are related to each other and making predictions. What is regression? So before we get into linear regression, let's gain a solid understanding of what regression itself means. In order to understand regression, you must first understand two types of variables. An independent variable is one that is under our control, such as the amount of water given to a plant or the amount of sunshine it's exposed to. Independent variables are causative. A dependent variable is that which we are trying to measure or predict, such as how big the plant will grow given the above. Dependent variables are effect of or result of the independent variables. Regression analysis is a set of statistical processes for estimating the relationships among variables. It is also used to understand which variables are related and how strong the relationship is. In machine learning, regression attempts to find a mathematical model to predict the dependent variables given the independent ones. A model is a transformation engine that helps us express dependent variables as a function, such as using a mathematical equation, of independent variables. Parameters are ingredients added to the model for estimating the output. These are what we add to the equation and tweak to find the model which most closely approximates our data. There are numerous types of regression which apply different mathematical models in an attempt to predict the dependent variables. Which one is best? It's your job as a data scientist to figure out which one fits your data best. Often you can see this immediately just from graphing the data. Linear regression is the simplest, but for a lot of data problems, it's all you need. This finds linear relationships between data, that which can be graphed as a straight line, and is what we are going to be covering in this tutorial. Logistic regression is used to predict binary variables of the type true, false, yes, no, success, failure. It is also used in classification tasks like detecting a dog or a cat for measured characteristics. Polynomial regression adds exponents to the equation and is perfect for data when the graph looks like a curve rather than a straight line. There are many other types of regression, but those are for another lesson. Once you understand linear regression, the rest will be much easier. The linear equation is used to graph any line inside a 2D grid space, and this is the same equation we use in linear regression. The linear equation is y equals mx plus c. y is the dependent variable, what we want to predict. x is the independent variable, what we know and control. m is a slope which determines the angle of the line. This is one of the parameters we tweak in order to find the line that best fits the data. In regression, it is denoted with the Greek letter beta. C is the intercept. This is the value of y when x is 0. Real-world data sets will almost never graph to a straight line, which means that there's always going to be some error in your approximations. Error is the difference between the actual y and the predicted y. Our goal in linear regression is to find the slope and intercept that results in the least error possible, but will never completely eliminate it. Once we've found the best fit line, the remaining error is called irreducible error, which is noise in the data which cannot be reduced by any model. The equation for linear regression is written like this. y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times x plus epsilon. Beta 0 is a slope. Beta 1 is the intercept, and epsilon is the error. Let's look at a real example. Let's say you're into powerful cars and shopping around for your next ride. You want to get the most horsepower possible for your buck. And you're also learning data science, so what do you do? You get a nice fat data set from Kaggle of cars, which includes horsepower and price. Your goal is to build a model to understand the relationship between horsepower and price. Here are some of the questions we might ask. Is the price of a car related to engine horsepower? How strong is the relationship? Is the relationship linear? Can we estimate car price based on the engine horsepower? To answer the first and second questions, are the variables related to how strongly, we can calculate what is called the correlation coefficient. This is a number from negative one to one which expresses the relationship. Negative one means there is a perfect negative relation, descending line. Zero means there's no linear relationship whatsoever, 
and one means there's a perfect linear relation and it is an ascending line. Note this only calculates linear correlation. The equation for calculating the correlation coefficient isn't difficult, but thanks to the magic of libraries like SciPy, you don't even need to worry about it. Since the data set comes from Kaggle and they offer a free, convenient Jupyter notebook solution of their own, we're going to use that for this week's tutorial. Go to the Kaggle Automobile dataset page, link in the description. You can explore the various columns to see what the dataset looks like. When you're ready, click the new kernel button to open a notebook. The dataset you selected will be inside the input directory. We can list the files to verify it is there. Now we'll load the data and list the available columns. We need to make sure that the data in the columns we need is in numeric format rather than string format and we'll remove any columns which contain missing data points. Finally, we calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient using SciPy. 0.81 shows a strong relationship. The number on the right called the p-value or probability value is the probability of our data being uncorrelated. Yeah, it's extremely, extremely low. Now the next question, is the relationship linear? The best way to figure that out is to plot it and see if the data seems to follow a line. Let's use the visualization skills we learned last week. Import bouquet, set it to output to the notebook. Create a data source with horsepower, price, and the make of the car. Configure a mouse over tooltip to display the make, the horsepower, and the price when you mouse over a dot. Configure the dimensions of the graph and axis labels. Plot the data with circles and show it on the screen. Boom. Now it's time to actually perform linear regression and find a line that fits the value. But before we do that, a standard practice in data science is to divide our data randomly into a training set and a test set. The reason is that we want our predictions to generalize over additional data we haven't trained on. And in order to ensure this, we should set aside some data for the purpose of evaluating the model, which won't be used in training. 80-20 is a very common split, but we're going to use 75 for training, 25 for testing. We can do this very easily with the train test split function from scikit-learn. Now it's time to train the model and calculate the best line to fit our data. Under the hood, it's trying out many different values for the slope and intercept through a process called gradient descent. This means that it slowly adjusts the slope and intercept, measuring the error at each iteration. It continues adjusting in the direction that reduces the error. But like a microwave oven, you don't need to know how it works to pop some popcorn. We just plug the values into scikit-learn and presto. In machine learning, you can get some really good results using high-level APIs without having to know much of the math involved. But if you want to be part of building a better microwave or better machine learning algorithms, then it's important to learn how everything works under the hood. First, we create an instance of the linear regression class. The model expects input data to be a two-dimensional array, so we use NumPy's reshape function. The second dimension allows us to perform multivariate, multiple independent variable regression later. Model.fit is what does the magic. Now we extract the calculated slope and intercept by flattening a nested array. Now let's see what this looks like on the graph. We just create a line from the calculated slope and intercept, set the color and width, and add it to our existing graph. That looks like a solid fit to me. The final step is to evaluate the model and see how well it did. Let's go over some of the terms so you understand how to calculate the error. Error is the difference between the values predicted by the model and the actual values. These are also called residuals. Residual sum of squares, RSS, are the residual values squared and added together. Total sum of squares, or TSS, is the difference between the mean value, the average price of the car in this example, and each actual price squared and then summed. R squared, also known as the coefficient of determination, is a statistical measure of how close the data is to the fitted regression line. It is computed as 1 minus RSS over TSS. This is the ratio of variation explained by the model versus actual variation in the sample data. It's always between 0 and 1. 
Zero means the model explains none of the variation of the data from its mean. One means that the model explains all of the variation. In general, the higher the R squared, the better your model fits the data. Mean error is the total error divided by the number of samples. And mean squared error is probably the most common used measurement for testing accuracy of machine learning models, as long as we're predicting values rather than categories. It is simply the error squared and summed, RSS above, divided by the number of samples. All right. What we're going to do now is calculate both the R squared and mean squared error on the training data as well as the test data and compare them. We're looking for the values to be somewhat similar since if the test error is way higher than the training error, it means that our model has overfit to the training data and is not useful to extrapolate on data it hasn't trained on. We use the model to make a prediction for each price based on horsepower. Then we use scikit-learn's metrics package to compute the error statistics. Mean absolute error is simply the average error in dollars, so you know how far off the price predictions were. Running the metrics on both the training set and the test set, we see that there's not a huge accuracy difference between the test and training predictions. This indicates we have a good model. Now that we've seen how regression works with one independent variable, let's add some more factors from our data set to see if we can improve the accuracy of our price prediction. Simple linear regression involves one dependent variable and one independent variable. How do we use multiple factors to predict the car price? If you add one more data point, the linear equation now looks like this. Y equals M1 times X plus M2 times Z plus C. We've added a dimension and it becomes a plane instead of a line if we graph it. Adding further dimensions makes the data extremely hard to visualize. The multivariate regression equation is y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times x1 plus beta 2 times x2 and so on and so on plus beta n times xn. The first thing we'll do is check some additional data points to see which ones are correlated to price. As before, we've got to coerce the columns to numbers and remove any missing data first. Then we calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient as before for each column and we discover that horsepower, engine size, length, and width are highly correlated, but peak RPM and height are quite weak. So we're going to drop those for consideration in our model as they won't help much. We're going to stack up the columns we want to incorporate into the model into a single NumPy array. Then we split it again into training and test sets. And finally, we fit the model just as before. The coefficients, or the weight for each independent variable, are in an array, so let's combine them with the column names in a Python dictionary. How do you read this data? Every one unit increase in horsepower will increase the price on average by $51. Every one unit increase in engine size will increase the price on average by $102, and so on. To generate a price prediction, simply multiply each value by its weight, sum them all up, and add the intercept. Let's see if the multivariate model is more accurate than the single variable model. As before, generate the predictions and then calculate the error metrics. You can see that the multivariate model has a significantly lower error rate and a higher R squared than the simple linear model. Before, we could predict the car prices to within around $3,000, and now we can predict them to within around $2,000. So that concludes this week's tutorial on linear regression. The visualization contest is still on. I think most everyone needs a bit more time to do a high quality job. Recall the assignment is to pick a data set that inspires you and visually tell a story with it. Post a link to your work in the comments of last week's visualization homework assignment. We'll give you until Sunday, March 3rd, and the winners will be featured in the following week's video. In other news, my wife and I are expecting a baby the last few days of February, so I'm going to be taking a couple weeks off. But I'll be back very soon with more data science tutorials. In the meantime, happy number crunching and stay data lit.